One, two, three, four. Got hip pain and wondering what to do about it? In this video, we're gonna cover the top three mistakes people make when they have hip pain. I spent years with debilitating hip pain in my 20s. I couldn't even sit for a few minutes because my hips felt like they were rotting from the inside. I got really anxious about this and that wasn't helped by the fact that it was hard to get in and out of the shower just having to step over the bathtub because my hips would snap and pop and grind all the time. I'm now stronger, more flexible and more mobile and more comfortable than I was even when I was a teenager. As we go through the three mistakes, I'm going to be sharing some ideas with you that may sound a little bit hard to believe. So I'm going to be sharing the relevant research articles in the description section down below so you can check things out for yourself. And believe it or not, a lot of times doctors are too busy or have just too much going on to keep up with research like this. So if you think your doctor could benefit from reading these things, make sure you forward them along. While you're down there in the description section, you'll also find links to our do-it-yourself training programs that will help you retrain your hip muscles so that you move well and feel good. So check those out too. The first mistake is thinking that an x-ray or MRI is going to show you the definitive cause of your hip pain. Unless you have something really obviously serious like the bone rotting, an x-ray or MRI is not going to help you determine what's actually causing your pain. A lot of times people think, well if an x-ray shows that I have cam impingement, pincer impingement, or arthritis, then it's a pretty clear sign that that's what's causing my pain. Likewise, people think in an MRI, if I have labral tears or cysts that show up, those must be causing my pain. But in fact, study after study shows that these things all exist in people with no symptoms. And when you look at large populations of people, these things like arthritis, like labral tears, like pincer and cam impingement show up and have no relationship to people having pain or not. The second big mistake people make is stopping all movement. A lot of times doctors will say rest is going to fix this problem or that moving too much or moving in specific ways is going to give you worse arthritis, it's going to rip up your hip joints and it's just going to make things much worse. These types of statements can make people very fearful and anxious about trying anything to try to improve their hip situation. So it's really important to take a look at an example from recent medical history where this kind of advice and this kind of approach was applied. For several decades, if you had chronic back pain or recurring back pain, doctors would tell you that bed rest was your best option and that bed rest was gonna protect you from making your back worse. So they made these determinations based on what they found in x-rays and MRIs. They saw arthritis, they saw degenerative discs, and they thought, well, you don't wanna to move too much, otherwise you're gonna make those things much, much worse. But what they found in recent years is that bed rest actually makes your back pain much worse and is actually not a good idea. So in recent years, they've actually completely revised the ideas of treating back pain by suggesting that you try to keep moving rather than keep resting because ultimately the things they saw in x-rays and MRIs actually had nothing to do with people's back pain. When you have debilitating hip pain, sometimes rest seems like the only option. I understand that personally because I used to feel like oh, I just need to take a nap, except I would have to take a nap like three, four times a day and I'd keep waking up feeling worse and worse and worse. So the thing to remember is even if you use rest as your first option, your first solution, it's not a long-term solution. The only thing that happens if you continue to rest, rest, and rest is muscles get weaker and weaker and weaker. The only way hip muscles that control your hip joints get stronger and better and feel better is by actually learning to use your hip muscles better and better and better. The third mistake that people make when they have hip pain is giving up too soon on non-invasive approaches. When you're working to retrain your hips, things can be a little bit complicated, which can get frustrating. Progress will not be linear because things are a little bit unpredictable with the hips. We're at a point in human knowledge where we're only beginning to scratch the surface of how all these muscles work together. And it's really interesting when you really get into the nitty gritty to realize that some muscles functions actually change depending on the angle of the femur. So when you're working with a code 
coach or a physical therapist, a trainer, whoever you're working with to help you figure things out, you have to be ready to experiment to see how your body is going to respond to different exercises. As you're working to restore comfort and mobility to your hips, you have to be open to experimenting with all kinds of different maneuvers, positions, and exercises that ultimately you have control over. It cannot be a purely passive process. There's a great book called Back in Control by Dr. David Hanscom. I will leave you a link in the description section. Dr. David Hanscom is a spinal surgeon and in his book, he talks about how people in general in our society tend to view surgery as the best answer, the final answer for people's pain. And in fact, from his experience and from all the research he's looked at, surgery, especially for spines, is definitely not a surefire answer. If we look at spinal surgery as an example from medical history, as we did earlier, we can see how it's unlikely that hip surgery is going to be the best, most definitive answer for somebody's hip pain. So if you think about surgery as your definitive answer and just go to that when some exercises don't work, then you're running the risk of having a surgery that may not give you the result you're looking for. Another thing Dr. Hanscom mentions is that surgery is just not a guaranteed long-term solution. He's seen tons of cases where people have perfectly executed surgeries that relieve their pain, but within a year or two, back pain comes roaring right back. And he attributes this to people not knowing how to address the big picture, like stress management, anger management, and knowing how to physically train their bodies properly. I know we've covered a lot of information in this video, so be sure to check the description section for links to all the relevant research articles for more videos to help you with your hips, and also for links to our online do-it-yourself hip training programs so you can learn to retrain your hip muscles so they feel good and move well. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for this video. If you liked it, please click the like button and be sure to share it with somebody you know who has hip pain. Remember to subscribe and you can find us on Facebook with the link in the description section. And as always, I hope you remember that pain sucks. Life shouldn't. <laughs>